Steve Mignani here at Burnison Auto Wrecking in Burnison, Massachusetts doing the junkyard crawl. And here we have the first generation Chevy Blazer, 1969 through 72. The K5, of course, this is four wheel drive, but remember in 70, 71 and 72, you could get a two wheel drive Blazer, which would have coil springs at the front and at the back. And let's remember too that GMC sold a similar version called the Jimmy. And this is a model kit of it, available from round two. Uh, cool little model. But again, all wheel drive was seen on most of these things. Now we look here and we can see this one here has the leaf spring up front. Again, if this was a two wheel drive of which maybe 1500 were built per year, we would not see that. We'd see coil springs and A-arms. But this is kind of weird. Notice how this has multi leafs. We'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, something that was unique to the blade which was first seen in the 1962 Chevy Nova was the monoplate leaf spring, just one leaf. And that was standard on Blazer, but again, we'll get back to why this thing is more than one leaf in a couple of seconds. Now this one is a 1971 or a 72. We know that because the grill has the egg crate pattern. Uh, 68, 69, 70 would have had a, a wide horizontal sort of a, a motif in the middle, but again, 71, 72, the egg crate stuff going on right there. Now, unlike the Bronco, which had a 289 or a 302 as the largest engine, you could get a 350 in a Blazer. Base engine was a 256, the 2926, the 307 V8, or again, the 350. What's this one got? Well, it's gone now, but the emission sticker here, yeah, look at that, 350 four barrel carburetor. Now, you gotta remember that the Chevy Blazer in 1971 they sold about, uh, I think, 17,000 units, about 1,000 shy of the Bronco, but they were just coming on strong and really giving Bronco a fight. By the redesign in 1973, Blazers were 50,000 a year versus about 25,000 for Bronco. So Chevy turned the tables, even though they came last. Now here's the thing, this here says CST, Custom Sports Truck. And what does that mean? Well, basically it's a dress up package and we can see remnants of it down here. Along the belt line, we'd see here these sort of faux wood applique um, trim, which would have gone all the way around the perimeter on this puppy. Then inside you would see things like uh, nice vinyl bucket seats and that kind of thing. But again, uh, one thing that's often not remembered is that the Blazer was available as a convertible or with the fiberglass top. Now, a lot of folks think that the top comes off real easy. Well, it does, but it doesn't come off in five seconds. Here's how. Now we can see right here, the anchor points for the front at the top of the windshield header uh, that would bolt in here, but along the sides, there were one, two, three, four, five, six times two, 12, 13, 14 fasteners. So you needed two people at least to lift the top off. So you, if you had a hard top blazer, more often than not, you were driving it with the top on or off. It wasn't an either or situation. Now this one, of course, does have coil or leaf springs in the back. So we know, of course, it's an all wheel drive. Again, the two wheel drive models would have had the light duty coil spring suspension from the Chevy uh, C10 pickup truck. Uh, this does have the six lug wheel pattern here, which is heavy duty suspension stuff. And uh, you know, this one's pretty well rotted out. Now these things are coming on strong in the auction scene. Uh, 50 to 100,000 bucks is not uncommon with an LS swap. Uh, this one, well, you know, it might be a little too far gone, but if we take a peek inside, we'll see this does have uh, the manual transmission, or it did. Uh, there's the transfer case right there. The floors are shot, unfortunately, on this one. Uh, but we come around to the front and continue our, our, our watch. And one thing about Blazers, it was fully loaded, potentially, power brakes, power steering, air condition if you wanted, things that the Bronco didn't offer. AC on Bronco didn't happen until 1978 with the redesign. So the Blazer was kind of a step ahead of Bronco. Um, now something that's kind of neat on this one is we still have on the inside of the glove compartment door the original specification sticker. We can see it right here. Starting from the top left, we see tinted glass, front wheel lock hubs, turbo hydromatic. Okay, so this was an automatic. Uh, also AM push button, auxiliary top, dark olive. And here we have here, heavy duty front spring right there, this line. That's why this has multi-leafs. The basic standard suspension on a four wheeler would have a monoplate single leaf spring. So interesting, 350 heavy duty four barrel, small block power steering, full wheel covers. And this one does have the custom sport truck. And we have here the uh, fiberglass top, auxiliary top. There it is right there, right there. That's the, the white 
fiberglass top. So this was not born a convertible. So again, if you're uh, looking to convert your blazer from a hard top to an open one, have at least two buddies kicking around in at least 45 minutes to an hour. It's not a quick job. But again, this blazer, this K5 all-wheel drive is probably a little too far gone. But when this thing was new, this cost $3,234, which is about 340 bucks less than a Bronco. Seriously, Chevrolet underpriced the blazer. Um, and again, by 1973, the tails were turned and Blazer outsold Bronco two to one or almost. So again, but Blazer's just getting started here, first gen, and these are pretty cool. Um, I dare say this thing, it's pretty much far gone. I wouldn't say this could be rebuilt, but you never know. That's the beauty of the junkyard. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Maggs YouTube channel. There's a lot more where this came from.